Well, the big news of the week, Mike Williams coming in just days after you said goodbye to Ruben Van Heerden. Yeah. Just explain the whole Ruben situation and how Mike has come in. Yeah, obviously, listen, I mean, my long chat with, with Ruben, he's, he's disappointed that things didn't work out as well as he wanted to. You know, he committed to coming over here. Um, I think he's a guy with a bright future. You know, I, I actually said to him, I said, like, the big shame here is, like, I think you're a guy with massive potential. He's been playing well for us. I think there was there was there were stacks that I think we only really scratched the surface with him, but I think you know he spoke to me about that as well. He just said he didn't feel that he would really ever play to his potential because he just couldn't feel like he could really, really settle in. He didn't realise how much he'd miss South Africa and his family and his friends. I think the same with his same with his wife, and they've they've only recently got married. Um, I thought probably the same with her, and he just had he just kind of said to me like I'd like to go home. Can I explore the opportunities of picking up a contract at home? I said, fine, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say I want you to be here and be unhappy. And obviously once we gave him permission to look back home, an opportunity came at the Stormers uh, and we allowed him to take that. So it was, it was done in a very kind of grown up, civilised, good person type way. Um, and so you know, there's, there's nothing, no regrets there other than I think Ruben feels some regrets that he just couldn't settle and couldn't make it work. Um, but outside of that, it was one of those scenarios that happens. It's happened with other with some hemisphere players before. We've released them early from contract for various reasons. Sometimes it's been World Cup, sometimes it's been opportunity, sometimes it's been to return home. Um, and then obviously with Mike, um, things just the stars just aligned really. Um, he was going to become available. Um, Bath were prepared to release him. Um, he's fit, ready to go. I know he's not played rugby this season, but he is fit, rare and ready to go. Um, we've got a perfect block now where he can get in, get some weeks training under his belt. We've After the loss of the game, we've just got the one cup game in a number of weeks. So it just gives him that ideal time to settle in. And, you know, I do know Mike pretty well. We've played against him a lot of times. He's played some really good games against us. I've looked at him in detail before when he's been on the market as a potential signing and things haven't just quite aligned. So I know he's ready to go. I know a lot of our guys know him. Everybody I talk to says he's a good guy. He'll invest and commit to the club fully in the way we play and what we want to do. Um, I couldn't really ask for a, for a better recruit here and now to come in and, and bolster our ranks just at the time we need them going into the Six Nations. And that versatility he brings both second row and back row will be key, won't it? Like you said? Definitely. When I mean, we've got plenty of players like that, you know, we, but we just we just got. I just said to him, like, you know, enjoy yourself, throw yourself into it. You, you never know what can happen. You know, he's it is a, he's in a scenario now where you know we're in the we're going to. I've got an opportunity if we if we beat Gloucester to move in the top four for the first time this season. When we're at home in the last sixteen of the Highland Cup, you know, let's let's see if he can live a dream and win a trophy. You know that that's what you can do: throw yourself into things and see what can happen. And I love I love guys having these kind of opportunities. You were asked this morning about Luke Cam Dickey and the chances of seeing him in the extra chief shirt. You remain very hopeful that that will happen. I think so. You know, the timing say that he's going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. Um, sometimes those can, those things can change by weeks or two either way, and that might take away that opportunity. But you know, obviously, if we get progression games, that helps a lot because it starts to extend the season. But you know, the physios are confident that he'll be back before our last kind of official game of the season, so to speak. Um, I think he's confident he'll be back way before then. You know, that, that's what it looks like, and the combination of the two means he probably will get there. So that's, I mean, obviously that's great news for us. Great news for England, obviously going into World Cup year. Um, but like I say, if anybody can, anybody can get themselves ready and ready to go in a short period of time, it'd be Luke Cowan Dickey. You know, he's, he's hobbling around in the boot right down there, screaming that he'll be fit to play in two weeks time. And why is everyone holding him back? You know, that, but that's what he's like. And so like I say, if anybody can get themselves ready for the end of the year, it'll be Luke. And you also know that you'll be playing Montpellier now in the last 16 here at Sandy Park, huge fixture. Yeah, obviously, you know, Progressing in any competition is fantastic. You know, I, I don't know how many years I've sat in, in interviews and said, look, all we talk about is we're going to fight and we'll fight until we're out of every competition. <coughs> at the moment, we're in three, which is great. And we're just going to keep working hard and keep fighting and keep looking at the positives and going as far as we can. Um, obviously, it'll be a challenge. I think there's a difference. There's a difference playing teams when it gets to the direct knockout stages to some of the pools. You know, when clubs have got different things happening, are they travelling, are they home, they're away, where are the big games around the pool games? <coughs> Sorry, you sometimes do see that little bit of rotation in squads, that little bit of a change up, that all changes now. Now we're all in it to win it, and that'll be the challenge now, you're going to have a fully loaded Montpellier team come over here, you know, 
going flat out, looking to progress. They know they can have a home quarter final. You know, it's going to be a humdinger of a game. I was going to say the home advantage thing is key, though, isn't it? You talked ahead of last week that if we can nail that home advantage, I think you in a lot yeah, better position. It obviously does because a we're, we're having a good season at home. I think we've just lost the one game at home and what was it, the last kick of the game. So we're having we're showing some good home form, and you know this, the stats do say that majority of these kind of games get won by the home team. That said, you know I've also been involved in the games. You have to turn up and you have to play well and you have to be ready to go because teams don't just turn up and lose. You know not at this stage of these competitions, not the quality of the teams you're playing against. So we've got to turn up. We've got to turn up to win, and if we do that, as I say, we give ourselves a great chance because the following week. It's going to be Stormers or Harlequins here, which will be another great occasion and another great day for the club. And we've got to, we've got to get, get ourselves ready to have some big days.